Yes. Uh, it sounds like there's, uh, looking briefly over the bill, that there's a number of issues that aren't being uh, addressed in this bill, such as the uh, gross revenue threshold that would uh, allow businesses only to be taxed on their own municipality. Can you talk about some of the issues that are not being addressed here that still need to be worked out? Uh, some of the things that are, aren't being addressed, a lot of what we try to do up from both sides, from the, from the uh, uh, groups that, from the uh, municipal uh, coalition that was put together, a business, business coalition, to come up with a comprehensive bill that addressed a lot of those issues. And some of those issues are, are currently uh, maintained as status quo because they're uh, pending court cases like uh, the SERP issue and, and uh, as well as the casual entrant when it deals with professional athletes. Uh, there's some other treatment, uh, the taxation of S corporations uh, and passive entities. How those are currently taxed, none of that has changed and maintained the status quo uh, the way uh, it's currently in, in, in state law. So some of those issues have not been addressed because we're waiting for uh, some other precedent to uh, take place, if it does take place. There seems to be a lot of changes in here. Can you point to a couple that you think will get this across the line and satisfy the municipal league? And I think this substitute bill uh, embellishes a lot of the hard effort and, and work that the municipal league, the, the coalition, their groups, uh, all those individuals that uh, attended the meetings with me or uh, were not in attendance but provided their, their insight and their input as well as the coalition. So there, this is a compromise uh, sub bill that I think both sides uh, can agree upon. Uh, it accomplishes what we, our goal was to simplify the process to improve the process, to ensure that uh, as best we can to uh, achieve the revenue neutrality. Uh, for example, the uh, casual entry, we're going from 20, uh, 12 days to 20 days. But a lot of the changes within that 20-day uh, rule came from the municipalities themselves. They actually sat down and a lot of these changes or their recommendations uh, was the blueprint that we used to move this bill forward. Uh, there are uh, unique changes in that bill when we define worksite. Uh, preponderance of the day uh, to have the uh, opt-in version for uh, small business owners if you're under five hundred thousand dollars in gross receipts you no longer have a filing requirement you have to just check the box that, uh, on a once a, a year basis so we've simplified the process and standardized the process to to make sure that it's it's easier to comply with municipal tax laws and file and, and file tax returns that, I don't see any mention in the changes on the, the policy board that was created in the original. Is that still in there? Has that been removed? Took that out. You took it's that out. out? Yeah, the policy board, the, uh, the uh, problem resolution officer, all that has uh, uh, has reached a compromise, has been has been taken out. You have an LSC comp doc for this year? Uh, <laughs> yes, we just received the LSC uh, comp document, and that will be made available for uh, at, at, when we go into committee to the committee members. Uh, we just got it there early, just a few minutes ago. I see on the uh, occasional entrant, um, it's now the 20 days. Where are we this day would not start, basically would not start taxing until the 21st day. Why? I believe the current law rolls that back to day one. Why are we starting at, why are we starting at 20, day 21? Okay, uh, and that's a very good question, and thank you for that. Uh, we are. Uh, we are starting it on on a 21st day, but we're also, if you if you look at the bill, uh, there's an opt-in version that came from the business community uh, with their recommendations that are currently withholding uh, for taxpayers uh, on day one. So we have not prevented uh, any business owner that wants to, to go back and, and opt in to retroactively withhold from day one for any of their any of their. Uh, employees. So it, it is, we do have it permissive that a business can go back uh, to day one and do the withholding, but uh, you're exactly correct on the, third, on the 21st days that, that that individual would have, a, that business would have a reporting requirement to the that next municipality. Why not make it day one for everybody? Again, this, this was a compromise that was reached between the, the city uh, coalition and the business coalition to allow the flexibility for the business owners to make the decision to opt in to go back to day one and actually do the withholding uh, versus making everybody do it. it, it setting up the $500,000 threshold for, for businesses, if, if you uh, look at our businesses that are under $500,000 uh, in gross receipts, uh, 80 to 90 percent of our businesses are below that threshold. So it eases the complexity of their filing requirements uh, by having them not uh, be required to go back 
from day one and withhold for each of their employees uh, after after that 24-day period. But it permits them, if they, if they still choose to, to go back to day one. 